coming up in all angles, the impact of measures to fight COVID-19, isolation. We may see an increase in depression, an increase in anxiety, that's a sure one. Paranoia, feeling afraid of things that don't exist. Economic hardship, increased domestic violence. But first, opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips tells the nation he had surgery for colon cancer. Tom. Opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips has revealed that he recently did surgery for curable stage 3 colon cancer. Joining us now, we have oncologist Dr. Andre Williams. We also have political scientist Dr. Jermaine McAlpin. Thank you so much for staying with us. Um, Dr. Williams, Dr. McAlpin, thank you both so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Dr. McAlpin, let me start with you. Jamaicans are very funny when it comes to sickness, right? And a lot of people think that illness and matters of health are in fact private matters. In the context of the opposition leader or the prime minister, do you agree? I, I agree partly uh, so because if it would somehow um, impact his uh, ability to uh, function effectively. And I'm not saying if you uh, have been diagnosed with cancer, but I think it becomes important to let people know rather than yield to speculation. I think he did the right thing by indicating uh, very transparently what is the current situation and to also provide uh, the medical assessment that he is in uh, good hands and good standing in terms of the possibilities of um, you know, um, continuing to, to function as leader of the opposition. So I think he did the right thing by revealing it because I'm sure speculation would be rife um, once people heard he was hospitalized. You, you said partially though, what, to what extent do you think we shouldn't be asking? Because on one level, you know, this is, uh, this is, a, this is a diagnosis that involves uh, a very personal thing and uh, there should be dealt with in the family. But when you are a public official, uh, the lines are, are great and, 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 and they're, they are blurred. Because when you are a public official, even private matters become of uh, importance to the public. And I think this is the kind of conundrum. So it's private because uh, many persons have uh, fought the battle with cancer. But those persons are also not public officials, including the leader of the opposition. So I think that's where uh, you know the blurred lines com come in. Compare, if you would, what we're seeing in the UK, where the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has developed COVID-19 disease and has been hospitalized. And well, we're essentially seeing 24-7 coverage of that story, photographs of the hospital, regular updates on his health and so on. The UK is still a very traditional society. And I think in many ways, this constant updating and this constant uh, feedback about the the health of the prime minister is important. I don't know if we had a similar situation, it would have been covered in the same way. And I think part of it was also some of the prime minister's own previous pronouncements concerning COVID-19, which is why the coverage is so intense. Okay, let me come to Dr. Williams now, because as we've heard from the medical team of the opposition leader, um, Dr. Williams, they told us that Dr. Phillips had surgery for stage three curable colon cancer, that the surgery was complete and successful, and that they're expecting full remission. Let, let's start out with what stage three colon cancer? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the first thing I need to make clear is that I have no additional information other than what you already have, Diane, about Dr. Phillips's care. Sure. Um, but generally speaking, stage, stage uh, colon cancer is staged from one to four depending on how much involvement of the colon the cancer has produced. Um, and naturally, it becomes easier to treat at the lower stages. So stage one would be the easiest to treat because it oftentimes just requires removal of the mass within the colon. And as the stages increase, it becomes a little bit more difficult um, to address. So the colon, as, as you may be aware, um, most Jamaicans think of it as a tribe. Um, it's where our body allows waste to be formed and allowed out <laughs> exits. So 
Um, the challenge with colon cancer is that it has a potential to involve a very crucial area, which is an exit pathway for the body. And uh, the, the colon in that case can become obstructed. So it's important to remove the mass, first of all, and that's when we come into the discussion now. Having removed the mass, um, what do we think about what the mass is? Based on the report that, I, that you just referred to, um, stage three would indicate that the mass itself was removed, but that on, upon removing it, they found that what we call lymph nodes surrounding the mass, which are areas that the body would normally have sent waste from the colon itself, away to these lymph nodes for processing. Um, those lymph nodes apparently are involved, and that's how we get to a stage three. So it means that it's not just a mass in the colon anymore, but the area around the colon where the colon would normally drain its waste, called lymph nodes, um, those have become involved. And what are lymph nodes? <laughs> So lymph nodes are what we call wax and cannon in Jamaica. So sometimes you get the flu or you get, when you're younger, you get chicken pox or one of those things, you'll find some little things coming up in the neck. We call them wax and cannon or wax and kernel. And they represent almost like a processing site for waste from the various areas of the body where the waste is cleaned and then returned safely to the bloodstream and other areas. So when... <laughs> When we hear then that the surgery was successful in terms of stage three colon cancer, is that something in fact that's, that's normal, that's common? Uh, well, absolutely. The surgery itself is, um, and I happen to be aware of the, the abilities of the, the team in, in question, and I know they're very skilled. So by communicating that the surgery was successful, what they're indicating is that the entire mass was removed um, and they would usually have removed several lymph nodes as well. Um, so they were able to successfully achieve um, what we call a good resection. Um, but having evaluated the actual specimen that was removed in the lab, they realized that A, apparently it was indeed uh, cancer, and B, that the lymph nodes surrounding the mass were also involved. So the surgery itself certainly would have been described as successful. Um, and then having looked at the mass itself and the specimen that was submitted, they would have made an additional assessment. And we hear that the follow-up treatment is going to involve chemotherapy. So what does that do? Yes. So that's a standard, that's a standard um, algorithm for stage three um, because the consideration when, when something has spread to the lymph nodes surrounding an organ, um, the possibility that microscopic or tiny residual traces of the cancer might have been left back, whether within other lymph nodes or in adjacent areas, remains. And so as an abundance of, of caution, what we generally do as oncologists is to recommend chemotherapy um, to try and control and hopefully destroy any residual um, pieces of cancer that would not have been visible to the naked eye. So let, let's assume all goes well. His team has said they expect him to um, be in complete remission after all of this. Tell me what that means. So complete remission would indicate um, that having completed the chemotherapy, there, are, there is no residual evidence of any cancer whatsoever in the body. Um, and as science improves, we have more and more ways of demonstrating this. So imaging studies, for example, a PET CT scan, uh, which looks at the whole body and uses various parameters to determine if um, there's any likelihood of any remaining cancer. We have different blood tests that can be done. There are you know, various different ways that we can evaluate whether there are any, in fact, remaining areas. No, we, we've spoken to, we, we've heard from the PNP and they say, um, Dr. Phillips will be returning to his duties in two weeks. He'll be doing mm -hmm. chemo, um, and in between performing his normal duties. Now, a lot of us, we hear cancer, yes. and we say, boy, mm. done, it's over, it's, it's done. Do you know of <laughs> patients who have gone through this process and indeed are able to continue to live a normal life? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so one of the things that cancer care is moving towards now um, is that we're looking at the individual, not just the disease. And I think it's also gonna be very important in this case I'm not familiar with Dr. Phillips, um, nor his medical history, obviously, uh, but it is entirely possible 
um, that in, in paying attention to the different parameters that come into play, um, such as his age, whether he had any uh, illnesses prior to this, uh, there are different things that would need to be addressed simultaneously while he's being treated. But it is entirely possible, I think, that he could go into what we call complete remission. And as it relates to his ability to, to do his work, I suspect that will be left up to his doctors to make that call. Okay, let me come back to you now, Dr. McAlpin, because, well, we had an ele expected election this year. We don't know what's going to happen, given, given COVID. But the fact is, we do have an election in probably less than a year. So to what extent right. now is it reasonable for us to say or expect updates on, on Dr. Phillips' health? I think we're in a holding pattern now uh, in terms of, um, you know, electioneering, though in, in Jamaica, there is always uh, election campaigning and electioneering. I think um, it it remains to be seen how the party and uh, the, the leadership of the PNP will uh, update the nation, uh, you know, rather than leave things to speculation. I think what becomes critical is how much and to what extent they need to say uh, certain kinds of information. I think when it comes down to the question of elections, the very first thing that will be articulated or, or speculated is competence, whether or not he would be able to, um, you know, go through an election cycle. We know the demands and the rigors. Uh, those are the things that will come into question um, from a medical perspective and also from a political perspective. Uh, we are well aware that persons uh, have to function as normal as possible with chemo and radiation, um, you know, conducting um, their, their regular uh, affairs and professions. So it is not out of the question. However, if we know the stuff of politics, it requires far more than the average profession because so much of what you do is analyzed and overanalyzed and every step you take, once people see them in public, they're going to also do their own assessment. You know, So these are the kinds of things that happen when our politicians uh, though we think of them as almost uh, Teflon, untouchable, these things remind us of the very human nature of the political exercise. For you, though, would it be a matter entirely up to Dr. Phillips, his doctors, and his party, if he indeed feels able to continue to con his job as well as to take on the rigors of a campaign? I think, to be honest, given um, the reality that uh, Dr. Phillips uh, you know, has a very strong familial support, I think that's where the first conversation lies, uh, not with or about the PNP or even the, the possibility of uh, elections. It is whether or not his family uh, and himself uh, feel that he is competent enough to take on the rigors and the demands of continued leadership in political office. We have, we, we have some, some kind of precedence in terms of these conversations uh, with the former leader of the party, uh, the right honorable um, Michael Manley. Yes. Um, so, doctor, uh, well, other doctor, <laughs> for you then, <laughs> the, his, his medical team then would, would be saying to him, you're cleared, you can do this, you can campaign. So, uh, family, putting in family, as, as Dr. McAlpin said, family and medical team, mm. they make the decision together with Dr. Phillips. I, I would expect that. Um, as I, want, as I said earlier, I want to emphasize that his medical team is comprised of probably some of the best doctors we have locally. Um, and I know they're going to give him really good advice. But, you know, Dr. McAlpin makes an excellent point, which is that at the end of the day, family usually has to come first, um, long before politics. And I'm, I'm, as his doctor, perhaps, if I were to advise him, <laughs> my main priority would be for the patient um, and not necessarily anything else. All right, have to leave it there. Can I thank you both so very much? We really appreciate you both joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Take care.